I'm not Pastor Scott. I'm not Pastor Stephanie. I am the president of United Women in Faith at Canyon Lake. And so I'm going to be doing the service. So just be prepared because I don't know how the service goes sometimes and I forget things. So if you laugh, it's okay. I have a good sense of humor. So we're going to go with Stephanie. She's going to tell you everything that's going on. There we go. All right, first things first, I am Pastor Stephanie. It's wonderful to have all of you here today. Uh, if I could have you take the friendship pad from the center aisle, if you haven't grabbed that already, fill that out, let us know you're here. This is a great way for you to stay in contact with us, updating us on your contact information changes, if you have prayer requests, <laughs> if you have any questions or would like to serve in any way within the church, this is the way to tell us or to ask those questions. And we see them every week, and we will get back to you. Second, I have Miss Erin. Oh, I have to hold this again. Erin, can you help me hold this? Okay. Good morning. I'm Erin Witz, your children's ministry coordinator, and um, I'm here to tell you about March's mission project. I know it's not March yet, but because the Easter extravaganza is halfway through March, we have to start a little early just me making you aware. Check. 
Okay, so March Mission Project is community outreach. And the way that we do a lot of community outreach, hi, children with us this morning, um, is by doing family events to kind of get them into our property to make sure that they feel loved, to get them kind of comfortable with us, and to just plain old serve the community, right? So we have an Easter extravaganza, not an Easter egg hunt. Um, and what we're doing this year is kind of a craft theme and so to help sort, support us through the mission project, you can do cash donations and we will shop. Or there's different yellow tags that you can just pick up, purchase, and bring back. Um, and then there's clipboards on the back table where you can sign up to be at a station and run that craft on that day. Or set up or clean up. Okay? I'm around if you have any questions. The other two things that we do for outreach is Vacation Bible School. And so the date has been set and there are save the date papers on the back table. And then camping is another thing that we do. Maybe not totally as community outreach, but, um, but everybody is welcome, true. And I was gonna make people aware of that. So there we go. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. let that go, there you go. Uh, I'm going to have Doug Scheller come up here, and once he gets up, he'll have one announcement, but I have two while he's walking up. We have raised 332 pounds of food for the Church Response Food Pantry. We are still collecting this week, so feel free to drop them off. And it's the last weekend to sign up to help with the International Student Organization Meal, which will be this Friday. If you have questions about that or would like to sign up, there is a sign-up sheet in the lobby. They still have a few needed food items, um, and they will need folks to help serve that meal as well. All right, Doug, what's your announcement? She told me to hold this close to my mouth because last time I was up here, I didn't, and she kept putting this in my face. Anyway, you might gather that I belong to a Lions Club. I belong to the Rushmore Lions Club. And for the last 62 years, we've had a pancake benefit over at Black Hills Works to support what they do in the community. And so if you would like to do a good turn today, do something for yourself. Go have a nice pancake, and all the money that is raised there goes to Black Hills Works. I'm going to indulge you in just a second to tell you about a gentleman I read about. His name was Joe. And he was, uh, an, he was born in 1959 with Down syndrome. And initially, he was up in Redfield at the facility up there. His parents never felt very good about leaving him there. And eventually, they got him hooked up with Black Hills Works. Black Hills Works helps individuals with mental or physical handicaps, helps them adjust, and helps them reach their God-given potential to do what they can in life. And Joe's a great example. He ended up with a work for 40 years. It used to be, well, for Monument Health now. Anyway, he was a happy person. And he's always ready with a, I'm gonna read this. Always ready with a hug or a handshake. He enjoyed strumming his guitar, singing, food, pretty girls, the Dukes of Hazard, shopping, bowling, traveling. And he was so funny that his sister said they had Joeisms, things that he would say or to make everybody laugh. And he did that. And he taught people compassion, compassion and acceptance. And he exceeded the ex expectations of many. And my parents always said that Joe and Black Hills Works were gifts. Joe changed our world, and Black Hills Works changed Joe and helped him become who he became. He recently passed away after working 40 years and having a good life. And that's really what we're talking about, helping people with some disadvantages reach their potential and have a good life. So go on over there and have a pancake. You'll do somebody some good. They'll be there until 1 o'clock. They're serving pancakes, biscuits and gravy, sausage. Kids, 8 and under are free. It's $10 a ticket. It's right on Range Road. Come on over there. We'll, we'll take care of your breakfast or your lunch. Thank you.
stand with us. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior. The hope of nations. So, Lord, we come before you. Save us. Save us from ourselves and save us from the world around us. But, Lord, may it be that you work through us so that the world can be saved through us. We ask that you would fill this time and fill this worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Living sacrifice. Oh, 
It's time for kids.
Sorry for my delay. I was trying to get the nursery kids motivated. They only, whoa, Bubba. They start, they start moving when they hear the music, which is a little late. All right, friends, this morning we're gonna have a picnic, except for my blanket is so not gonna be big enough. Okay, we're pretending we're in Jesus' time and they're having a picnic on the beach, so I better light the fire. Ta da! And make our meal, which is fish. You want, hey, it's hot. Fish. We're making fish for breakfast. You want some fish for breakfast, Jordan? No! Here's some fish for you. Here's some fish for you. If fish isn't your thing, we got bread. No donuts, though. No donuts in Jesus' this time. Just kidding. Okay, so we're on the beach. This actually, this is a story in the Bible. They're on the beach, and Jesus is with his disciples, and they're having fish and bread, and he's talking, and he says, I'm going to go away, but when, when you stay here, I want you to go and feed other people. Jesus was telling his disciples, I want you to go feed other people. Do you like to feed other people? Leave the bread alone. <laughs> Okay, focus. Ready? Ready? Are you, when we go feed other people, what do you feed them? What do you, fish? You're gonna feed people fish? How about on Wednesday nights? Last week we had sandwiches. This morning we had granola bars. So sometimes our, our tummy is hungry. Has your heart ever been hungry? What? How can your heart be hungry? Your heart is hungry. Sometimes when you're like sad or you kind of feel like something's missing, your heart can be hungry. Yes, for love, exactly. How can we fill other people's hearts with love? How can we make other people feel good? We give them compliments. Hugs, good one, Jordan. Ooh, yeah. Sometimes people's hearts are hungry for God and they don't realize it yet. So we could invite them to church and then they could get full in the hearts of God. So there's two types of hungry, hungry in your tummy and hungry in your heart. And Jesus was telling his disciples to go feed both of those things, tummy and heart. Good deal? Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for food. We love having our tummies full, but we also need to fill our hearts with love and with you. So help us to go out and feed those people, everybody else, their tummies and their hearts too. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. This morning I'll be reading scripture from Mark 8, verses 31 through 38. Jesus predicts his death. Then Jesus began to tell them that the Son of Man must undergo so great, undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. 
He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. I got this. Well, I'm starting to have it. Would you pray with me? Eternal God, holy and faithful, what can we give in return for our life? Teach us to take up the cross of Christ with grateful hearts and humble spirits, offering all for the sake of the gospel, feeding your sheep as we are called to do so that we may receive life in fullness through Christ who is coming in glory. Amen. Would you pray with me? O oh God, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our second scripture comes from John 21, verses 10 through 17. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I represent a fantastic group of women. We're called United Women in Faith. Next month, we'll celebrate 155 years of United Women in Faith. That's a really long time. However, 
we kind of follow the tradition started years and years and years ago when Jesus fed. He fed 5,000. He fed 4,000 at another time. He fed the Last Supper to the disciples. And then he fed them again on the beach. And he asks us to do the same. So United Women in Faith, that's what we do. Most of our stuff involves food, really. Most of it. Because what we do, see our theme is uh, food, faith, and, and fellowship. But I kind of changed it around because we start with food. And then as we sit and eat, we talk. We visit with each other. We share things. We share stories. We share anecdotes. We share children. We share whatever. But we share with each other, which in turn builds us into a community of faith. And so then we can put that faith into practice because we are united together and we are strong when we're united together. Um, this kind of serving see, has gone on for a long, long time in the church. In the early church, they did it. They served one another. And in our church is what we do. We are, we are the accumulation of a long tradition of food and fellowship and faith. So if you, for instance, have ever come to Brunch Bunch, have ever been to the... Christmas celebration, have ever been to the salad luncheon? If you made a pie and brought it to the pie sale. Now that's our banner thing, you know, when we sell pies. So if you have, I want you to stand up. If you've read a book back there, if you have ever been to any of these activities, stand up. Look at this. See how we are surrounded by women of faith. We are mighty, we are, and we do mighty things in our community. This is a list of some of the, the things that we raise money to serve in our community. But we are, we are pretty, uh, pretty good about it. In both of these scripture readings, Jesus is dealing with Peter. And I'm kind of like Peter. I kind of understand Peter. He was pretty pretty uh, easy to figure out in the Bible when you read the stories about him. He's kind of impulsive, and I'm kind of impulsive. I sometimes let my mouth run away with my brain and say stupid stuff. But, you know, and, and he did these things. Now, this is a man who was a fisherman. He wasn't rich or uh, well-educated or any of that stuff. He was just a fisherman, kind of a normal, normal type guy, pretty strong probably because in order to be a fisherman, you have to be pretty strong. In those days, they didn't have all the machinery to pull the nets in. But anyway, here's Peter, and he's fishing, and Jesus comes by and says, come with me. I'm going to make you a fisher of men. Well, I don't know if Peter quite understood that or not, but he's a Jewish boy. And so from his birth, he had been taught the story that there was going to be a Messiah that would come and he would establish a kingdom on earth. And so he walks around with Jesus for three years and he's watching Jesus as he's doing, you know, healing the sick and he's talking to other people and he's teaching in the synagogues and, and he's uh, feeding 5,000 with just a little bit of bread and fish. And you're, and you're going, and Peter's going, He's watching all this and he thinks, aha, I got the plan. This is what we're going to do. We are going to eventually go into Jerusalem. We'll raise an army. We'll kick the Romans out and God will establish his kingdom right here in Jerusalem. And I get to be part of it. Good plan. Good plan, Peter. I know he's thinking this. That's exactly what I would have been thinking at the same time. Watching Jesus do all this stuff. Well... In the first scripture in Mark, Mark reports that uh, Jesus started talking about how he was going to die, and he was going to be crucified, and he was going to be tried, and he was going to be buried in a, in a borrowed tomb, and then on the third day he would rise again, and Peter grabs him by the arm, and he says, no, 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 that's not how it's going to go. 
we know how this is going to end. You're going to establish your kingdom here on earth, and I'm going to be part of that. We're going to fight. We're going to raise an army and throw the Romans out. And Jesus looks at him and he says, no, no, Peter, you're thinking about things in human terms, and I'm thinking about things in eternal terms. Well, Peter didn't quite know what to think about that. Okay, but then they entered Jerusalem. And Peter, and, and, and he was crucified and dead and buried. And Peter goes, wait, wait, that wasn't how this was supposed to go. I had a plan. I had it all figured out. And here we are. See, and sometimes I'm like that. I get, I get my plan all figured out. See, I'm a teacher. God wanted me to be a teacher. I knew that from a very young age that I was going to be a teacher. So I'm, uh, I'm, I, uh, my husband and I had moved to Utah, and I didn't join the majority religion there in Utah. So I wasn't going to get hired in the public schools because I wasn't a member of the LDS church. So that kind of put me outside of things, and I thought, okay, all right, there's, there's other schools around. I had joined a Bible study where we lived. It, we were up in the mountains, about 7,000 feet. And uh, in our little community there, there was a Bible study called Explorer's Bible Study, and I joined it. And best thing, decision I ever made in my life. But anyway, I met a woman named Pat Russell. She was a teacher, too. Uh, she was teaching at a school called Cardin Memorial, which was down in the valley. And she taught kindergarten there. And she was the leader of our Bible study. So that's how I got to know her. And one time she came to me and she said, Judy, I really need help in this classroom. I've checked it out with the directors of our school and I'd like you to come down and help me. I've got too many kids and not enough time. And, and if anybody has ever been in a kindergarten class, you know it's like herding cats. You just get them all rounded up and then they're gone again. So uh, especially if you have too many kids. Well, so I went down and I helped her. And I worked in the school with her and kind of got to know the people there. And um, it was an unusual school. It just, it just was an unusual school. The, uh, the directors were LDS. Their names were Mr. and Mrs. Jeffs. I don't know if you've ever heard of the name Jeffs before, but that's the family. Anyway, I thought, I don't know how you can do this, Pat. How can you work in this school? This is ridiculous. They had, guess what? They had staff meetings on Friday afternoon. If you did that in the public schools in Rapid City, you would have a revolt among your teachers. No one has staff meetings on Friday afternoon. And then they would do Mormon doctrine sometimes at their staff meetings. See, but I was okay with all the rest of the teachers because they were all LDS too. Anyway, so I decided, nah. I didn't want to teach at Cardin, but God wanted me to teach. So my plan was to go to the Baptist elementary school and apply to the Baptist school. And I did. I did it over and over. I got two interviews there, but they rejected me every single time. So I'm going, I know I'm supposed to teach, and here you reject, this is not part, the, I don't know what to do now. I don't know how this is supposed to work. I know God's got a plan for me. He wants me to teach, but you know, I had a little girl, she was about four years old, and I thought, boy, this is a perfect place for her to be around other Christian kids and in a curriculum that taught religion. I thought that would be, I don't think God wanted me there. Because Pat came to me one morning and she said, Judy, there's a second grade opening at Cardin and I, I think you should apply for it. And I'm going, oh, I don't want to teach there. But I thought, okay, all the other doors are closed. I'm going to give it a shot. So I went down, and this is how arrogant I am. I'm, I'm pretty, sometimes I, I surprise myself. Anyway, I was walking into the interview with Mrs. Jeffson, and I'm telling God how it's got to go. I said, first of all, I have to have enough money to make this economically feasible for me to drive down the mountain every day and back up again. I, th that's going to cost money, and I have to have enough money to make that work. Second of all, I have a four-year-old daughter. She is not going to stay on the mountain while I am 22 miles away down in the valley. So we got to have some kind of, she's going to be in preschool, which is only in the morning. So in the afternoon, she's got to have 
somebody to care for her. So I walked into the interview, and all this time, you know, I'm, <laughs> okay, God, if you want me to do this, then you've got to show me, and you've got to answer these blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm just laying it all out for him. And uh, as I came out of the interview, I was praying again. But it was a prayer of joy, because God had been there ahead of me with that director, with Mrs. Jess. She had it all figured out. She offered me more money than I ever thought she would. That's the one thing. And then she had it all figured out so that our daughter Moretta could go home with her daughter and her granddaughter. Ruth was the same age as Moretta, so they were going to be in preschool together. And I thought, well, you know, this is either going to be really good or really horrible. Because if they don't get along, then I'm in deep trouble. But God blessed this whole situation. I was blessed to be able to teach Bible stories to children who never, ever got to hear them. And I, I told my class always, I said, we're going to start the day right. We're going to tell our Bible story, we're going to talk about this, and then we're going to, then we're going to have a good learning environment. So if we got interrupted any day, the children would say to me, Mrs. Linsko, we haven't started our day right. We have to do this. And they just demanded Bible story every day. I got to do that for seven whole years. It was such a blessing to me. You want to understand the Bible? Try explaining it to eight-year-olds. You'll figure it out pretty fast. Then our daughter, Moretta, grew to just love her caregiver. That family loved her, and she loved them. And she thrived in that school. God blessed it all the way around. His plan was so much better than anything I could have come up with that it amazed me. Okay, so let's go back to Peter. He and I. Then the second scripture in John, Peter's thinking, it's all done. We're dead. This is the, it all went to pot, and the plan didn't work. And so now we have, what are we going to do? You know, you stand there wondering, what now? What's next? And Peter, they were all gathered in the upper room, and Jesus appeared to them, and he said, I'll meet you down by the Sea of Galilee. And I know that Peter said, Phew, thank goodness, now we can go back to what we know. We can go back and do what's familiar and what we know. And so he, uh, he went to the Sea of Galilee, and he and Andrew went out on the boat one night. They, they start out in the evening, and then they fish all night, and then they come back in the morning. And so they fished all night and didn't catch anything, and they were bringing the boat back to shore. And on the shore, they saw a guy who was building a fire on the shore. And he hollered out to them. He says, what'd you catch? And Peter said, eh, we didn't catch anything. And then the guy said, well, throw the net on the other side of the boat. So I'm sure Peter thought, well, what the heck, we'll just do it. They caught so many fish, they couldn't even haul the nets in. 153 fish, big fish. So then Peter looks again. Of course you would, wouldn't you, twice? Huh, I think I know that guy. And so he jumped out of the boat and swam to shore. And they pulled the net in, and Jesus looked at Peter, and he said, give me a fish. I'll cook you breakfast, starting with food. And they ate together on the beach, on the shore there. And then Jesus looked at Peter and he said, Peter, son of John, do you love me? And Peter said, well, yeah, I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. And then he asked him again. You know, when Jesus was on trial, Peter denied Jesus three times. He denied knowing Jesus three times. This is where Peter connects the dots. Then Jesus looked at him and he said, Jesus, uh, Peter, son, Simon Peter, son of God, or son of John, do you love me? And Peter said, yeah, I love you. And Jesus turned to him and he said, take care of my sheep. And then the third time, Jesus said to Peter, he said, Simon Peter, son of John, do you love me? And Peter's gone, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. So this is Peter. New plan, Peter. You're not going to fish for fish anymore. 
you're going to fish for men. Jesus told him he would. He said, Peter, you're the rock I'm going to build my church on. So Peter went back, told everybody the good news, that we are saved. That applies here and now to us. God knows who you are. He knows where you are. He knows what you need better than you do. I figured that one out. Thank goodness somebody knows. Anyway, this is, this is why I'm here. God has a plan for me, too. I get to be blessed to be the leader of this amazing group of women. We are so willing to serve each other and serve our community. And, and whenever I asked, uh, you know, we, we sent out a sheet saying, would you be willing to? I get yeses all the time. It's just amazing how that works. We have a, a booklet like this. I am sorry to tell you I don't have any now. I'm going to have to come up to church and print some more so that because they were all gone last night. But in this booklet, there will be some next Sunday, okay? And they'll be out in the uh, narthex. So I want you to take one. It has all our names and addresses and stuff in it. It's got a schedule of all the events. It's got an accounting of where we spend our money. And it's got places to invite you to come and join us and be part of us because we are building a community of women, a community of servants. That's what Peter became. He became a servant who gathered a community of people who built each other up, gave them a servant heart so that they could be part of the people who spread the word about God. This is what we do. This is how we roll. Come and roll with us. Let us pray. Our gracious God, we are so grateful that you have given us the talents that we use to serve your sheep. Help us to remember that it isn't about how much talent we have or how much we can give or what we've even done in the past. It's about who you are and how well you know us. Help us to be courageous and step out in faith knowing that you have gone before us and have planned our path. When we act according to your will, that is when we can succeed beyond anything we can imagine. Surround us with your loving care. Strengthen us to see each other as your children. And help us to step out in faith to be your hands, feet, and mouth in this world. We serve so that others will know who you are because of the things that we say and do. Amen. Stand with us. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds and feet my Savior on that cursed tree His body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb Messiah stand and all alone. Oh, praise the name of Lord. Oh, praise the name forevermore. Sing your praise, O Lord, our Lord, our God. In the 
the third at break of dawn the sun of heaven rose again who oh, trampled dead where is your sting the angels Christ the bless you and keep you. May, may the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh 